Hey guys, this is Christopher with the second FreeCAD tutorial. This video will be all about the Sketcher Workbench, which contains all your tools and constraints for sketching. I'll be talking mostly about the constraints, but I'll also show you how to use some of the tools. First, you need to create a sketch, uh, which is this button here, and you can choose what orientation it's in, and also the offset will uh, make it go up and down, or if it's one of these orientations, it'll make it go side to side or forward or backward. And the direction um, changes the front side to the back side, or the back side to the front side. But none of that really matters if it's just in 2D. That only matters after it becomes a 3D model. So I'll just leave it in the XY plane. And here we have our sketch. So before we use any of these constraints, we need to make something with all of our tools. And the main ones we'll be using will be the uh, line, arc, circle, rectangle, and polygon. So uh, the line, uh, you just click on it, and then click on the two endpoints, and it makes your line. And with all of these uh, sketches, you can move them around any way you'd like until you define them with the constraints. But that's the first tool. Um, the second tool, the arc, is uh, the center, radius, and first endpoint, and then the second endpoint. You can also generate it differently with the endpoints and the rim point, which is like a three point arc. The circle is pretty similar except that you don't need to find endpoints because it's a full circle. And uh, this tool here, the polyline tool, it's just like this one, except you can just keep clicking and it'll add lines. That's normally what I use for making lines because I normally have to do more than one. And the rectangle tool is a pretty common one. You just click on two corners and automatically uh, defines horizontal and vertical tangents or uh, constraints so that it'll always be a rectangle. And the polygon tool, you select the center, radius, um, you can make different polygons of that. I actually don't use that too often, but it's there if you need it. Um, there's also other tools here, um, but those are the most common ones. So, um, I think even more important, though, are these constraints over here. This is what makes CAD parametric, basically. Um, you can go back and edit the constraints to change your sketches, even after you've um, used them for 3D operations. So, I'll just sketch something real quick. Um, you can see as I hover over these lines in the origin, it automatically creates some constraints. Okay, so we have this shape here, and it's free to move around in any way you like, except that this line right here is confined to being vertical. Um, that's what this means here, is a vertical constraint. No matter how I move it, that will always be vertical. And no matter how I move it, this means that this point will always be on that line, and this point will always be on this line. And this one is stuck at the origin. So normally your goal when you're sketching is you want it to be fully defined, which means that nothing can move. Everything is um, as defined as it can be. So um, the first constraint is the coincident constraint, which would be um, just two points. You can select two points um, as coincident, and it just means they're in the same place. When you move one, the other one moves with it. The, um, the next constraint 
is similar except it's between a point and a line. It's always on that line. Or it can be between a point and an arc or a circle. And now it's always on that arc or circle. Now, it looks like it comes off of it down here. But that's just because it's on the extension. If you were to extend this arc into a full circle, then it's still on it. Um, it doesn't actually have to be on um, the part of the arc um, that's shown. It can be anywhere on that circle. The next constraints are the vertical and horizontal. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you select a line and make it vertical, it will always stay vertical. And a line horizontal will always stay horizontal. But something else you can do with it would be um, select two points and make them horizontal. And now they'll always be in a line that's horizontal. And you can do the same thing with vertical. The next is parallel. Um, if I just make two lines out here, select them and set them parallel. Oops. Um, no matter what now, I can move them around any way I'd like and they're always going to be parallel, no matter what. And if I delete that, same thing works for perpendicular. Now, no matter how I move them around, they will always meet perpendicular. Even if they aren't touching, if you were to extend them so that they were, they would still be perpendicular. The next is tangent, which is similar to parallel, um, except it's between a line and an arc or a circle. And it just means that they intersect at one place, like this. Um, the slope at the point that they intersect is equal. So those are tangent. You could also set these two tangent. Um, and now um, it's a more continuous shape. There's not a corner there like there is on this side. And if we set these tangent, um, now there's not a corner there either. The slope there is the same. So now um, we kept these tangent constraints on there. It's a little bit more defined. We can still move it around, but less things can move. Um, actually, if you open up the solver messages, it says that there's two degrees of freedom. That means there's two things that can move in this. And that would be um, this height and this width. And that dictates everything else. If we define the height and the width, then nothing will be able to move. Um, but first I'll go through the rest of these constraints. So if we make another line here uh, and select them and make them equal, then that means, oops, exited. Um, no matter how we move these around, they will always be the same length. Um, the symmetric constraint, um, if you have two objects, oh, before I do symmetric, I also want to say that if you have uh, two arcs or two circles, or an arc and a circle, and set them equal, then it sets it sets their radius equal. Um, so, it works with lines and arcs. Anyway, with the symmetric constraint, you can select two lines. Um, sorry, you can't do that. You select two points. And a line. Oops. Two points. There we go. Two points. Oh, I keep exiting. Um, now, 
the two points that we selected are always going to be symmetric about the line that we selected. They'll always be the same distance apart. Um, and it works if we move it across, um, except that we have some other things conflicting uh, because of the other constraints we have. But if we created two more things and defined them across this line, sometimes you have to select your objects first and then constrain them. Now we can move them across the line and they're still symmetric across it. Um, So, uh, next I'm going to talk about the dimension constraints. Um, they're different than the other ones. The other ones don't have any numbers involved, um, but the dimension constraints do. So there's five of them, well six if you include the lock. Um, it's, it's a little bit different, but anyway. There's horizontal and vertical distance, straight line distance, radius, and angle. So, if you just lock one of these points, then it sets the horizontal and vertical distance to whatever that is. I don't normally use that because um, normally I just like to set distance either horizontally or vertically or however else. I don't normally do it that method. But um, that will lock a point in place um, rel uh, in reference point to the origin. You could also select a point and uh, another point and it'll give you the horizontal distance between them. And of course you can double click on it, go back and change it to whatever you want. And now uh, you can see that horizontal distance, not necessarily the straight line distance. You can see um, they're not in line with each other here, but it's still giving us the horizontal distance. You could do the same thing between these two points with the vertical distance. Um, and then you could also do it with the straight line distance. Um, the next one is the radius, which would be an arc or a circle. You just set the radius to whatever you'd like, and it'll define that. And there's the angle, where you select two lines and set the angle between them. So, that's all of the constraints. Um, now we can go ahead and fully define this. So, we've got one degree of freedom. Um, only if we define one more thing, that means it will stop moving. So we can just um, do this distance here, set that to three inches, and now it turned green, which means it's fully defined. So, nothing can move because if anything moved, then it would have to break one of these constraints or dimensions. So that's how to create a fully defined sketch in FreeCAD. I hope this video was useful to you, and if it was, please like and subscribe.